what CIOs need to know about private 5G networks. I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is Alejandro Hochman, Senior Vice President of Engineering at Qualcomm. Welcome Alejandro. Hi Tanya, welcome. Thank you. Of course. How are you involved with 5G at Qualcomm? Um, at 5G, uh, at Qualcomm, we, we run a group that um, works with operators around the world in uh, helping deploy 5G networks. So we help them uh, with education, we help them uh, in understanding the technology and uh, not just operators, but also uh, industry leaders. Where are we liable to find private 5G networks today? Well, uh, private 5G networks, uh, there's been a, a lot of industries that have actually had requirements where the public networks do not quite meet that. Uh, if you think about it, uh, there are industries where they may have specific latency requirements or uh, specific uh, speed requirements or reliability requirements. And if they cannot get that with the public network or with a Wi-Fi network, they've deployed 4G networks. Now with 5G, there is a lot more of these capabilities right now in terms of reliability, in terms of latency. And uh, that's what we're seeing a lot of industries right now deploying uh, or interested in deploying 5G networks. So, so then what do CIOs need to know about pri private 5G networks? Uh, well, I mean, it, you know, there's no talk of the digital future anymore. I think it's it's here right now. In, in just a few months, there's been a tremendous leap on, on how people view technology and everybody's recognizing some of these benefits that maybe would have taken five to 10 years under different circumstances. So uh, CIOs, right, you know, employees right now want to be able to have the exact same experience that they have on site as they have off site. So basically access to the cloud in terms of extreme low latencies, you want to be able to work from home or work from anywhere, uh, the same as if you were in the office. Uh, certainly conference rooms, the whole capability of virtual presence. So this is just the starting point. Uh, the other piece that I want to mention is uh, both CIOs and CTOs, they're now looking at not only the operational piece, but also the production pieces. They actually not just want to connect the employees, they want to think about their facility and how we can make the productivity and the production facilities in terms of manufacturing, building management systems, uh, it can go on and on. So what do business users need to take advantage, to do to take advantage of existing pri private 5G networks? Well, uh, I'll give you one example. Uh, we're talking with um, uh, CIOs around building management systems. And if you think about it, they're looking at, for example, connecting fire alarms uh, wirelessly uh, with a kind of um, feature you need extremely low latency and extremely high reliability. That is just one example. And of course, remote control, anything that would require a remote control where you need extremely low latency. What security implications should we consider when implementing a private 5G network? Yes, definitely. That is also another uh, question. Uh, 5G, in a lot of cases, uh, you have uh, assign your own spectrum. So you're not on a uh, public uh, spectrum in terms of unlicensed spectrum. So it's licensed spectrum. And what that means is that uh, there's no chance of all of a sudden people getting into your spectrum and maybe uh, you may have performance issues. So it's a dedicated spectrum that you will be able to use. And the other piece is maybe you control your own equipment. Uh, so uh, these days, the equipment for 5G has become more open. It's more interoperable. There are a lot more vendors out there doing infrastructure equipment. So this allows economies of scale where CIOs can actually implement their own private network and have control of exactly what speeds and reliability they may need. What's next on the 5G horizon? What capabilities will we have maybe in the next coming year that we don't actually have today? Um, well, definitely the far, faster speeds, reliability, and latency, those are key because you can access 
products, uh, you get the cloud closer to your device. But the one that I'm more interested about is the indoor positioning, actually. That's one that people don't talk about, and I think that has tremendous possibility. This is the ability for you to be able to accurately position a device within a few inches. So uh, this opens up the possibility in terms of you know, asset tracking, warehouse inventory, uh, all kinds of opportunities where you can actually control and also control, for example, of automated uh, guided vehicles for manufacturing plants. So indoor positioning, I believe, is one that uh, people don't usually talk about, but it's a, it's a key capability coming up on 5G. What recommendations can you offer to organizations that will implement private 5G networks soon? Uh, well, there is a lot of uh, discussion today. The, the first thing would be uh, understand, depending on the region of the world you're in, what the spectrum situation is, uh, whether you will rely on some of the spectrum from your operator or whether you can actually get, in many countries, actually there's dedicated spectrum that somebody can request. And then also uh, look at the equipment. Uh, there's a lot of companies out there that are offering uh, very capable equipment right now. For example, you can get 5G base stations, uh, pretty much the size of your Wi-Fi access points, and you have the capability of connecting them where they would have power over Ethernet, so you could take out your Wi-Fi access point and maybe replace it with a 5G exit point that also has Wi-Fi capabilities. So we're trying to be uh, make this very, very simple to install a private 5G network. Alejandro Hulkman, Vi Senior Vice President of Engineering at Qualcomm. Thanks again for, for coming on and joining us and talking a little bit about 5G. If somebody wants to connect with you, Alejandro, what's the best way they can do that? Well, the best way you go into our website, the team that we run is called ESG Engineering Services Group. And again, we help uh, uh, many uh, industries and operators worldwide. So happy to take uh, questions and, and uh, calls. Thank you. Of course. And find more of my interviews right here or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching.